All right, in this demo, we're gonna look at a common but hard to get right concept in TypeScript. So this is something that you will often encounter in TypeScript world where you need to use a string notation to access some value deep in an object. One typical scenario that you might see this in is if you have a set of strings for each locale. So this is common in internationalization. So here we have a locale called ENUS, and here we have some strings. So I have hello, and then you could also have depth here too. So I could say like greetings, and inside my greetings, we have morning, and we might have evening. And so here you can see that I have just the one locale, but you might have more for whatever languages you support. So I'm gonna leave this as is for now. We have hello, and then we have greetings. And so I've exported this, but it, it's actually fairly common to see something else exported. And so here in this case, imagine we have a function called t, and I'm calling it t for translate, but let's say that we're going to take one parameter here, some sort of a key, and this key is a string. And of course we want to return a string also. And so typically what we might, what you might think of is say, okay, well, let's imagine for a minute that my current so I'll say let current locale is E-N-U-S. And I'll go a little bit further and say that the current locale will make sure that it is a key of locales. So here I'll just say the type of this is key of type of locales. And then that way we should be able to uh, index cleanly directly into the locales. So here we can say return locales at current locale. And so here then we could say things like dot greeting or hello, but of course we don't want to hard code that, we wanna get it at the key. And so the problem here is that key is a string, and so string here cannot uh, index something with a known set of properties like hello and greetings. You could adjust the types on this to make it a little looser, to make it accept that, but then you'd also have to say return string or undefined because uh, we wouldn't necessarily know if all the information we have about key is that it is a string, we wouldn't necessarily know if it exists in the current locale. And so if it doesn't exist, we'd have to return something like undefined or some fallback value, right? But what we want is we want something that is going to do two things. It's going to enforce that you can only pass in a key that is valid. So in this case, we have hello and greetings. And then if we have that in place, we can know that the return value will be a string and we don't have to do the or undefined dance, which could lead to all kinds of other uh, sort of uncertainty in our code base if we don't know for sure that this is returning a string. So let's look at some things here. So the, the first and very easy thing that you might do here is we might say, okay, well, let's grab a type uh, here. And so I'm gonna just factor out this key of type of locales here. And so here I'm just gonna say um, type locale map equals type of locales. And then here I'll say type locale name. So this is the name of a particular locale like en underscore us. We're gonna say that's key of locale map. And then down here, we're gonna just drop that in where before we had the kind of longer version. Now, the reason I'm doing that is because now what I wanna say is I wanna say, all right, well, let's grab the object type here of one of these. And so here I can say, type locale equals locale map at locale name. So this is essentially saying I want the shape of this internal object here. Now I'm sort of dynamically computing this from the hard-coded values and in a real world application you might have another way of coming up with this but for now we're just gonna kind of dynamically compute these in the type system at the type level here. And the reason we do that is because we want this locale piece here. So here I can see locale has hello and it has greetings and that could grow over time. And so now here I'll say key of locale. And so here we're, we're pretty close. So let's just assign this to a variable so we can kind of hover over it and see what it looks like. So here I'll just say const foo equals, and if I hover over here, you can see, well now it knows that foo here is either a string, but it also might be this object here. So why is that? Well, it's because remember, there's two keys on this locale. So there's hello and there's greetings, but greetings has another depth of nesting here. So this has sub keys in it as well. So now the goal is to have a look at this and figure out, okay, you know, what can we do? So we still wanna return a string here, but we wanna figure out what can we do to somehow conditionally determine if we're going to traverse another 
layer of depth here. And so the way we actually want to call this function is we'd like to call it so we would say, okay, I want to return t and then I want to say uh, greetings dot and then and we want to say greetings dot and I realize now I said event instead of evening. But here we want to say greetings dot, let's say morning. And so we want that to say, okay, well, we know that greetings exists and we know that morning exists. So this is legit and we won't get a red underline and it will return a string and all of that. So how can we do that? How can we introspect this particular string constant here and determine if it, if the shape of this string kind of matches a path in this object? And this is, this is where it gets advanced, right? This is where it gets tricky. It's also where it gets fun. Okay, so what do we want to do here? Well, we want to say that key here, instead of saying key must be key of locale, what we actually want to do here is we want to say, okay, key must be a path into locale. And so lo remember, locale here represents this particular shape. And so path into, and you can sort of put this into your own words or come up with a name that makes sense to you, but I'm just kind of mentally modeling this as like a path into an object. And so here, let's write some types. So here I'll say type path into, and we'll say t equals a union of strings. So in this case, a valid union of strings here, or the, the end result will be, it should say hello, or it should say greetings.morning or greetings.evening. And so we essentially want this not to be hard coded, but to be determined from the shape of this locale object here. So essentially, the kind of shallow approach to this would just be key of t. And we might add an additional constraint here by saying like t extends, you know, record of string any, something like that, just to say that like t must be some sort of object here. In this case, what we want to do is we want to actually map through here and we want to say, okay, well, I only want the parts of t that have a string value. Right? So the parts or the properties in T that have an object here, I do not want to include those. I instead want to, for these, I want to do some additional processing. And so here, what I can do, if I want to be able to filter through and not grab all the keys, what I could do is I can use a mapped type here. And so I'm going to create a new object and I'm going to get the key of that new object. The mapped type here, I'm going to say for K in key of T. Remember the key of T here is going to be a union type of all the string literals of the key or the property names of T. And then I'm going to loop through them using this in keyword and call each individual for each individual iteration, call that K. And then essentially here I could say, you know, uh, the, the value here could be, you know, string or it could be any because the value here doesn't matter because we're using key of and getting just the keys out of this object. So here's where the trick comes in, or at least the first trick that we're going to look at is that here in, in for K here, I can say as, and I'll put a conditional type, which is kind of like a ternary, right? If T at K extends string. So if, if the value at k is a string, then we will return k. And when I say return, we're not actually returning, but we will we'll choose k. Otherwise, never. This is quite a, I guess, mouthful, so to speak. And so here I could sort of split this up into several lines, but we're not done yet in terms of any sort of depth. But let's just say, okay, what does this look like if I say type? foo equals path into locale. If we look at foo, it should just be the one key hello. So what that means is that means that only one key has its value. So that's T of K. When you see the word extends, you should think can be assigned to. So the value hello can be assigned to string. And so the thing is here, though, we're not actually going to say never in this case, we're, we're going to recurse in words and try this again. So for this part here, I'm going to wrap this in parentheses two here, and I'm going to say, so what about the other situation where T of K extends record of string comma any? 
then we want to do something. So I'm going to put some parentheses. And then otherwise, we'll say never. So never is the kind of fallback if it is not, uh, if t of k does not extend string and t of k does not extend essentially an object here, then we'll fall back to never. Okay, so now what do I put inside this piece here? I'm going to put a string literal, and I want k here, because remember, k is the particular key of t that I'm looping over. So in the case of our example data, k here would be greetings, and then t of k would be this object here. So here I do want k there, uh, and then I want a dot, like a literal dot, and then I want to, this is the part where I would recurse in here, and I would say that I want the path into t of k, because we said t of k here extends record string any. So that should allow me to recurse inwards. Now we've got a few problems here, and so the first problem, you can see that TypeScript is not happy about k not being uh, a string here. So maybe the easiest way to handle this is here I could say k and string. So I'm going to take the intersection of k and string here. What that means is that means that I only want keys that, uh, that are strings. Or the way to think about it is in the Venn diagram of possible values here, all the values that can be a k intersected with all the values that can be a string. So we essentially get things that are string and a k. Now, I think we know that k is going to be a string to some degree of certainty, although technically objects can have things like symbols and whatnot. Okay, and now we have this next piece here, which is that path into, oh wow, that is a doozy of an error message. All right, I think I can kind of just say end string and see if that lets me get away with it. All right. So this has gotten even longer and even hairier, and it is now recursive. But if I hover over foo here, you can see now we get foo is hello, it's greetings.morning, and it's greetings.evening. And even though this is kind of ridiculously long, and I, I know that's a very valid criticism of TypeScript, or at least when you're doing type-level programming like this, is that it is like super cryptic, and I think that it would have been quite difficult to kind of figure out the the intersect with string piece if you haven't done a ton of type level programming. There might be a better way. If you know a simpler way to express what we just did here, please do leave that in the comments and I will I will learn something new. Okay, so here we have the set of keys that we would want to allow when accepting these sort of paths like this. And so next we'd want to write our implementation and I could sort of spare you those details and just kind of do it real quick. And I'm going to kind of pause there and see if this thing works. Okay, so how would we use that? Now let's imagine we're over here in our index. Uh, here we have t, and I'll press tab to import that. So here I pass in uh, a function, and you can see that it knows these are all the possible things that are available on there. So I can say hello, or I can say greetings.morning. And if I say const foo equals, you can see that foo here is a string. Okay, if I jump back over here and I add another key, let's go over here and uh, add another layer of depth. So here in greetings, I could say casual, and maybe here we have morning, and then we have afternoon, yellow, whatever, right? So here now, can, will those show up at the right level of depth, and they sure will. So most of the stuff that we did today is type level programming, which is the hard stuff here. Uh, you can see it sort of reformatted my path into helper. We could certainly factor out certain pieces of this into helpers. So like I have a feeling we could, I don't know, maybe pull this out into a helper. When I say helper, I just mean another utility type. But uh, this was kind of a quick run through on how you could tackle a problem of that nature. If this kind of stuff makes you excited or if you like pushing the boundaries of what you can do with TypeScript, then I will keep making cool videos like this. All right, thanks for watching.